Hi there, I'm Ali Mulkarim. Today on behalf of Tech Forum, I'm going to talk about object oriented programming. If you're already from an object oriented background, then this talk may bore you because this is going to be very detailed and mostly for beginner to advanced level. So if you have never done any object oriented programming before or have few knowledge, then this is the session that might help you object oriented programming for the rest of your life. Finally, I can promise you that this is going to be the best object oriented programming video that you ever going to find on internet. I'm from developers organism. We make products for developers, not only for users. Currently our website is in under construction. However, we are not really interested in our website right now, but we are interested in our products. Presently, we are doing a big project called Developers Blog, which is going to be an open source free CMS system in C-Sharp.net. Well, you might ask why. Even though there are a lot of solutions already exist in the market, the challenge is to make the better product than all the existing ones. And we are analyzing for three months and we already have a great team we're going to make a product which is far ahead than all the existing product right now so if you really want to join us you can do that this is the email address that if you really want to join you can mail us and we will be really happy to see you on board it's prerequisites i'm assuming that you already have basic C-sharp programming skills in additions with namespace and function concept. Don't be freak out if you don't know UML because we're going to talk about it. It's a very simple concept but it's really a prerequisite but we're going to go with examples so that you understand what UML is. We're going to cover these following topics. Some of those are in details and some of those are in brief and complex ones are going to be very detailed and easy ones are going to be in brief. You may have heard from your colleagues, friends or read an article about object rendered programming or OOP then you have Google and end up here. In the previous days when I teach object rendered programming I give people example that it's a formalities and it's a sum of it's kind of a ritual that you should follow but turns out it's not a ritual it's kind of a required thing to do the programming seven years ago i wrote a program uh, for a company which was very good at the time and the little object rendered programming i know i just skipped and turns out after seven years later uh, not seven years, few years later uh, when they came to me for some change and I was really freaked out that frap I wrote and technically the changes uh, were for changes that I have to make was really very simple and technically it was very it was really two hours work but simple, the system was so devastating and so inflexible I have to spend one week to solve the problem so you can get my point that uh, if you don't use object oriented programming your system will become inflexible and we're going to talk about in details that some of the times overdoing object oriented programming also make your system inflexible when people talk about object-oriented programming, they really meant five things. And first, they meant class, second object, third inheritance, and encapsulation, and finally polymorphism. It's not that these are the five things that only exist. There are many things, but these are the five things that people really understand. Object-oriented programming history began around 1960s when MIT tried to develop a robot with object-oriented design. From that concept, 
the procedural programming changes into object-oriented programming. So let's see our concepts in detail. In high school, I never took biology, but turns out that somehow biology contributed into computer science and the class concept first came from biology. The purpose of the class is to organize your kid. Class is an abstract representation or an blueprint of an object. Let's say you have a person class. A class says a person should have a first name or last name, but it does not say what the first name would be, what the, what the last name should be, something like that. It's just abstract. In simple words, a class is a collection of methods and properties. A class should have two layers, one is data and another is logic. And data layer is also known as attributes or properties and logic also known as functions, methods or behaviors. So let's see UML. We have talked about UML that you should have know this but it's really very simple. I don't really think that you should have to Google. Uh, just make a box and write the name of the class on top of the UML. Let's say it's a person class, then you should write the person top of the box. And then in the first half, first half, you should write the properties of the data or the attributes of the person. And in the second half, you're going to write the methods, behavior, functions of the person class. Uh, UML is really represent a class in short. That's it. So let's see a UML of a person class. Let's say this is a person and a person should have a first name, last name, date of birth, address, gender, and these are data. Or attributes or properties. And the second half will contain the behaviors or functions or methods, whatever you say is correct. Behavior, logic, methods or functions. So let's say you have a calculator uh, application and you really want to use the classes. So what you can do is make separation of your logics, logics and into separate classes. Let's say you have basic, basic functionality of the class. So you put those basic functionality in the basic calculation class and you have scientific calculation part you put those into scientific calculation class and this way you can organize your code this is the purpose of the class so what is object so a class is an abstract representation uh, like this and the object is like the house itself building on that blueprint or the abstraction so if you assume that this is the blueprint of the house, which is the class, the object is making the house uh, on top of that blueprint. So a person, let's say the person class we have here, when we create the person class equals new, the new creates the person class and this new instantiate the person object into this person, smaller case person. So this is the object and this is the class, that's it. And this is the data type that we are picking up. So you have seen the object. So this is the object creation. So how you can uh, set a property or change the properties in a class, it's very simple. After creation of the object, write the object and put a dot and you'll see the properties of that object in that in this case we have first name last name so I just dot the person and uh, then I got the first name and then I'm putting value allies and this is how you set values and last name Roman son this is how I set values and how you get the values it's very simple it's like setting the values but uh, taking it in another variable that's how you get the variable, that's it.